We'll be looking at editing an image using Portrait Professional version 11. Version 11 incorporates quite a few improvements over version 10. Um, and I will show you how this image of this young lady here, who is about 15 or 16, uh, looks using this program. Um, this is the, the base image. And what we'll do first is make a copy by dragging it down here. And we'll call this the PP layer. We double click here. We can change that to PP because Portrait Professional is a destructive editor. What it's going to return to this layer is going to be um, completely changed. So we won't be able to uh, make go backwards without starting from the beginning. It's already figured out that it's a girl and we're good to go there. It's found a lot of these edges. It's missed a couple and we can readjust these edges later. However, in the case of the lips, uh, because the mouth is open, I'm going to change that now because if I don't do it now, it will create a problem for me later in trying to get this mouth open in the next screen. So a couple of things are off here, um, but I will fix that shortly here. It takes a second for the system to process and it will pull up and show me a before and after. Now it's got the side of the face off and it has sculpted the face. I don't want the face to be sculpted because I'm typically working in layers so I'm going to turn the face sculpting off and I'm going to adjust a little bit more carefully where it thinks the sides of the face is and if you look carefully over here as I do this you will notice some changes in colors and hues uh, throughout the image. Now there is an artifact on this I'm going to show it to you here for some reason it's creating an issue right there. We will fix that in Photoshop later. But it's important to keep an eye out for these kind of things because those kind of artifacts could end up essentially anywhere. So moving the point of the nose, the side of the nose, the other side of the nose. I'm going to zoom in on the mouth a little bit, make sure that's in the right place so it doesn't over or under whiten certain areas like if you look here it's um, light colored and as I pull this lip out let's see how the lip color changed there I'll push this in a little bit and there's a line here on the teeth I don't know if you can see it or not but when I pull this back down it's going to whiten the teeth more evenly. It's a dark area here, and as I move this up a little bit, it's going to do a better job. It's light here, so um, it is useful to have these lines in the right place to get the proper amount of enhancement to the various features. Um, and if I move the image around I will readjust where some of these lines go. And I'm going to fit the face again and this looks pretty good. Now the, the program often gets the skin areas wrong um, so I'm just going to extend the skin a little bit here and I'm going to cut it back here because if it's too close to the face edge. Sometimes you get a weird effect. Say OK. And do it some more over here so that it blends nicely. And cut it back over on the white shirt. Over here. Oh, I don't want to extend, I want to cut back. 
extend it up to the edge. Boom. And look at that. That looks pretty good. I'm going to. Uh, okay. That looks good. If you refine the edge, I don't think I need to, but what I do need to look at is the hair. Because um, the program often misdetects where the hair is. See, it thinks there's hair over here, which there isn't. So I'm going to remove all this over here. What I thought it was hair. Okay. And now that looks better. The, um, the touch-up brush is also a lot better than it used to be. If we zoom in on a couple of these areas, I have a feeling the touch-up brush will fix this for me. I can change the size of the brush either uh, here and the strength, or I can change it by using the left or right bracket keys. I'm using the right bracket key to make it bigger. And fixing this area right in here. trying to fix it, um, which is not working so well on this area. For some reason, it thinks it needs to have that little triangle there. I'll fix that in Photoshop, but you can see it's still there. Now, in the forehead, there were some blemishes that it didn't remove, and I'm going to adjust those here. The tiny one here. Ooh, don't like that. Control Z removes it. And don't like that. Control Z. We can reduce the brush strength. Again, this is why you need Photoshop. And it's still no good. Control Z. So that point we will fix later. The forehead it's working. It's going to fit the face, a couple of spots on the nose, it works quite well, but nowhere near as well as the content aware heel in Photoshop. Okay, that looks pretty good except for those couple of areas which I was unable to fix. So, let's look at the eyes, zoom in. On the eyes. If you look, this is the whitening circle here that it's created, and it's missed the center of the eye a little bit, and it's made the the iris, the pupil opening a little bit bigger than it is. So I'm going to make that more the size that it is. Shift it over. That looks pretty good. With the other eye, this eye is way off, you can see. So we'll shift that. Make the pupil a little smaller. Make the eye itself a little bigger. And that looks pretty good. I'll move the corner over. And move this over here. Okay. And we'll look at the whole image. This is it. Um, going to hit return from plugin. So it's returning back to the Photoshop plugin. I'm back to Photoshop from the plugin. And there's going to be a couple of areas to fix, like the makeup on the corner of the mouth, this area on the side of the face. And we'll see where we were. Now, typically when I use Portrait Professional, I will do some content aware healing before I use Portrait Professional. That's before, that's after. Let me make it a little bit bigger for you. Before, after. Um, 
there's a, a triangle here on the cheek. I'll just blow it up for you. See it right here? That content aware heel is going to fix. Nope, oh, that's fixed. And there's a hair here that wasn't removed in the nose. So I fixed that. There's a little something on the lip. A little bit of makeup. Um, this little thing we couldn't get before. One little strip with the heel tool fixed it there. And something here. Again, this is the part of the work that Photoshop does better. But you can see how much of the work didn't have to be. There's also a little scar right here. And that's done. That's pretty good to go. Um, I would remove a couple of these spots on the shoulder. The other thing I like to do is I like to dial this down a little bit to get some of the underlying texture. Um, but when you look underneath, everything that's underneath comes through. Um, so in my normal workflow, I would have done some content aware healing on these spots that I've done after the fact. Um, but if I want to work faster, I do it this way, and Portrait Professional removes a lot of the, the the issues. And if this is something that's going to be like small like this, you don't see any of it. And you can go pretty big here, and it still looks pretty darn amazing. That's at 75 percent. That is at 140 percent. There it is. Thank you very much.